Hey girlies, welcome back to No Pick Niches Allowed. I hope you're having a good day. I hope you got a raise. I hope you got a promotion. Today we're going to be talking about, you know, the aftermath of being a tried wife, you know? All these ex-tried wives will be talking to you. Basically, what happens? What happens after the marriage, you know? Let's keep watching. I'm better than you, I choose to make my children fresh bread every day. I tell them as a wife and mother, it's the yeast I could do. I love to lead by example, showing my daughters what a woman should be. A few moments later. I'm an ex-trad wife. The first thing I do every morning is check to see if my child support's been paid yet. Damn it! He is such a deadbeat. I'm an ex-trad wife. So I'm heading into Ace Hardware on a Saturday instead of relaxing or playing golf because I work seven days a week to support my kids. I'm an ex-trad wife. I work three minimum wage jobs to just pay my rent. I'm an ex-trad wife. I'm 15 years away from retirement and my bank account is currently overdrawn by $200. I'm an ex-trad wife. After a long morning of working on a furniture flip, I'm now getting ready to go to my second job. I just saw a creator ask where all the former trad wives were. And maybe some of the ones that went to college for their MRS degree got married as children and had, I don't know, five kids in seven years. The ones who learned to sew and darn and cook everything from scratch. The ones who wore dresses and made sure their hair was fully done and their full face of makeup was on before their husband got home from work. The ones who worked through cookbooks to make sure that the family always had something new and healthy and exciting to eat. You let your husband come home to a house that looks like that? Hasn't he been working all day? Well, we hit burnout in our 30s. We deconstructed our entire lives. We had, I don't know, a kid or two too many and hit a point that we couldn't keep up with the executive functioning that we'd been expected to do flawlessly for most of our lives. We stopped wearing makeup, started wearing tin and moisturizer. We bought the fair play cards as a family and redistributed them. We had to start paying other people to do some of the unpaid labor that we did for free for a decade plus. I have a question, right? What do you think would happen if women start saying, hey, you have to pay me for this unpaid labor that I'm doing. I am cooking four meals a day. I am cleaning. I am washing. I am being your personal assistant, right? What would happen if you told your husband right now, you have to pay me for those things? I am no longer being a stay-at-home mom for free, right? Because childcare, mind you, is about $2,400 a month. That is like rent, baby. Like, how are y'all doing that? And so y'all are giving away childcare for free. You gave up your pum pum for free, right? And we all know surrogacy is upwards from about 90K upwards, right? In the U.S., right? And so you're giving away, you gave away your womb for free, fine. Yeah, you gave it for a ring, but that ring was like, what, 5, 6K? Okay, whatever, right? And now you're, you know, doing childcare for free. You're feeding, clothing, and then you got to do all those things for yourself. And now you got to look hot, clean a house, make sure he's happy, make sure he's sexually satisfied so he doesn't cheat on you. I just feel like there are so many hats that you're wearing. You know, so what would happen, you guys, if we, we if we just ask these men to pay us before we start doing those things? Maybe we would lose a lot of suitors. That's OK. But something has to change. I'm not saying I'm perfect, but I'm saying we have to get ourselves out of this rut. We have to get ourselves out of the situation once we see that they're benefiting way more than us. Something has to give. Anyways, y'all, let's keep watching. And our spouses suddenly realize that that shit is never free. Some of us got to recommit and remarry the same person that we were already with and completely change the dynamics of our marriage, change what we thought was traditional or correct or moral or right. We had to re-regulate our nervous systems and learn how to deal with our anxiety. We had to overcome perception anxiety and perfectionism and people pleasing. I was a trad wife because I had traditional gender roles about what made me valuable. I am a partner and a mother in this community that is my little tribe, my little family now because I am a human. I am a mammal 
who is raising my mammal creature critter feral family together with the person I picked to do freaking life with. And Why is trad wife content suddenly blowing up? Because people my age that were traditional wives are getting divorced and realize that they threw 20 years of optional, available, could have been energy into the workforce, into their future. They threw that away doing laundry and watching their kids. Now, don't get me wrong. I wouldn't trade staying home with my children for anything. However, I would have insisted on some sort of investment into my future, either by way of a 401k, an IRA, a home in my name, or I would have had to have some sort of side gig where I could have put that on a resume if anything happened to my husband or our marriage. And so people my age, women that are in their 40s and 50s that have raised their children who have been traditional wives are coming forward and talking about the realities of that. Because someone like my grandmother, who couldn't have left her husband no matter what, because she went from high school and her parents into being a stay-at-home wife and mother, she could never have left, ever. And so I, being 51, I am like one of the first or second generations of women being traditional stay-at-home wives who are coming out and saying, don't do this to yourself. I have a family member that if her husband died or left her tomorrow, she would be a stay-at-home wife, broke on her ass with four kids and no way to support herself. Or if he died, she's completely screwed. All these trad wives are in my comments talking about, my man loves me, he would never do that to me. Lucifer loved God. He still betrayed him. That's the thing, you can't be like, my man would never, my man would never, my man would never. Check the comments. These men be never in like a motherfucker. I mean, honestly, honestly, and the institution of marriage, I, I am married. I've been married for seven years to a wonderful, equal partner who is an amazing guy, an amazing dad, but I'm not stupid enough to not have a job because if he left me tomorrow, I don't want to have to rebuild my life. Just saying, I don't want to have to rebuild my life. There's one thing to have confidence in your partner. And I do have a high degree in confidence with my partner and of my partner, but I'm not delusional and I'm not stupid. Okay, I'm not a fool. I understand that things happen. People change. Life is a constant motion of evolving. People are always evolving. So why would I put my trust in, 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 in a man? And what these um, young tribe wives don't understand is that you are a choice to that man. And he can make a choice to keep you or he can make a choice to leave you. And the fact that you are willing to gamble your life in your 40s and your 50s and your 60s on being a choice for a man, girl, God bless you. That's all. So I think a lot of women know better, right? Um, and you would think that knowing better, you would do better, right? But that's not the case for a lot of people. I think in certain situations, you get comfortable because you're like, okay, I can relax. I can go to the gym. I can just focus on myself because he's handling the bills, right? But she's right. Life changes. The economy is changing. Uh, the workforce is changing, uh, technology is kicking some of our asses and so things are going to change and nothing lasts forever right so it's important to have a backup plan whether that's a trust fund whether you're working on a small business idea whether you're creating a channel something that you're doing so in the event if that man leaves or hey you want to leave you don't feel like you have to make the relationship work because you are nothing without that person, right? You don't want to become a homosexual, you know, being with somebody just because of what they can do for you. It's the worst position to be. I think personally, I've been there where it's just like, you know, you get comfortable. You're like, oh, he got the bills. I don't have to worry about anything. But then something happens, right? And then it kind of burst your bubble and you're like, damn, I'm really not protected 100% because life is unpredictable and people are unpredictable as well. That man can go out in the world, he can cheat on you and find somebody else that he deems is better because he feels like all you're doing is cooking and cleaning anyways and anybody else can do that, right? So he looks at you like, oh, well, she's replaceable, right? 
So you have to work on yourself and make sure you create something for yourself that somebody else can't just take away from you when they leave. Anyways, y'all, let's keep watching. Because when I see young couples getting married, instead of just saying congratulations, I have to sit down and talk about financial autonomy and making sure that the female is supported in the relationship as much as the male is. And how are you going to co-raise those children together? And what's the exit strategy? And that's not a particularly romantic thing to ask a young couple when they're about to tie the knot. But I really wish that somebody had had those conversations with me. When I was 20 years old, I got married to a smoking hot Mormon return missionary and he promised to love me forever, not just till death to his part, for time and all of eternity. And he was a liar, but I didn't know that when I was 20. So I dropped out of college and gave up my job and had the babies and stayed home for 24 years of my life. And if you're new to me and you don't know what happened, at age 44, about six years ago today, I caught him picking up a 19-year-old escort. How do I know she's 19? Because that's what he had typed into the Google search, 19-year-old escort Phoenix, before he chatted with somebody on, I think it was Backpage, arranged a meetup, which uh, I had caught on his phone and followed him up there the next night. Two days after, my husband abandoned me and our four kids for a 19-year-old escort. I went to Trader Joe's to buy myself a bag of groceries, swiped my card, and it was declined. I should have had a ton of money in that account, and it was all gone. It was gone. My name had never been on one of our homes. My name hadn't been on our vehicles. My name wasn't on the Mercedes that I was driving at the time that our marriage ended. He was able to evict me from the condo that we were renting together because I didn't even exist on the lease, not even as a roommate, not even as a pet. He just canceled the lease. I was just some weirdo living in the condo that Jake had canceled and so the apartment evicted me. I'd always kind of thought in my head too, like being a homemaker gives me a lot of skills that I bet would translate into a job. So I right away like put together a resume, talked about all of the work that I had done this is why I'm not flattered by um, compliments from men because I know it's very um, shallow because as soon as you're not that hot 18-year-old anymore, you don't look like a 20-year-old anymore, that man is just going to look for a younger, hotter model that he can show off to his friends and his club buddies right um this woman carried his kids she nurtured everybody in that home and a 19 year old escort was able to snatch her husband away just like that right or somebody else would say hey he went out there and he went out there and looked for something else. Nobody can just snatch you away from your partner. He chose to leave, right? And so it's just scary to know that your livelihood is dependent on if a man is attracted to you still. You know, your livelihood is dependent on the emotional connection you guys have. It's dangerous because things change all the time. And that's why I have to work so hard because I don't want to be in this lady's position where she had nothing going for herself, right? And then boom, just like that, all her dreams, all her hopes for her family was shattered because of his decision. Anyways, y'all, let's keep watching gonna be controversial but when it comes to the trad wife at 20 to single mom at 40 pipeline y'all really have no one but yourselves to blame what do y'all think the second wave feminist movement was all about the grannies been told us the aunties been told us our grandmothers had to fight the u.s government to get bank accounts and barely even 50 years later y'all are voluntarily giving them up because connor from english 101 told you he was gonna love you forever what
Y'all, come, please, please be FFR. We are so much smarter than this, ladies. Do not trust the relationship decisions you make at a time where your boobs are fully developed, but your brain is not. When you let a man have complete and total financial control over you, he will always eventually fuck you over at the end of the day they're always going to have the mindset of well you wasn't with me shooting in the gym the entire stability of your life cannot rely on a man that you marry in your 20s wanting you for the next 60 years and vice versa because the tea is what happens when you wake up and you don't want him anymore what happens when you're ready to walk away but you have no job experience no bank account Nothing, because your entire future relied on this guy, this one human being, wanting you forever, or you wanting them forever. Being a trad wife will not work out, and I know this from experience. I grew up in fundamentalist Christianity, high control religion, and basically they wanted everyone to be trad wives. That was the goal. Now I see on TikTok all this trad wife movement going on, and I'm just like, mm, I've seen it. I've seen it. It's not good. It's not good. So of all of my aunts, I think like eight, seven or eight aunts. All of them, most of them chose to be trad wives. I would say probably like 85% of them, only one or two were not trad wives. Everyone else chose to be trad wife on the mission field or, and had tons and tons of kids, um, usually four plus kids. Then, and three of my aunts had 10 plus kids. So they took the trad wife to the extreme. That is what they were taught to do and that is what they did. And they all raised their children, homeschooled, went through the years, and every single one of them, except one, every single one except one, so seven out of eight, as their kids grew older, their husbands cheated on them. Every single one except one. All of my uncles except one cheated on their wives a lot of them actively cheated multiple times and a lot of my aunts ha had no work experience they had nothing to put on their resume they had to start from scratch they got not a ton some of them didn't get a ton of money or help at all and they had to start over and some of these guys were really seemed and looked really nice when they were younger but i will tell you it is really 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 foolish to have your retirement plan be a man because it does not usually work out. And none of my aunts would have said it wouldn't have worked out. They all didn't believe in divorce and... We all know men cheat, right? We all know that. Like a lot of them do cheat, right? But when a man knows that you can't leave him or you can't leave him so easily, I feel like they cheat more because they know what power they have in the relationship. They know that you can't just get up and go somewhere, right? They know that you don't have your own money. They know that you don't have your own job. They know that you rely on them 100%. So they take advantage of that. And we can't sit down here and pretend like, oh, he would never do that because he's a great guy. He's a good guy. He's a Christian man. People change all the time. And men are very selfish when it comes to their needs, right? So if he feels like, hey, I'm tired of her, I want something new, he'll go do that. He'll be tempted by a 23 year old. That's just how the world works, right? So we have to have a backup plan, you know? We have to, we have to have something going for ourselves. So if that day happens, we can just get up. We don't have to stay in an abusive situation. We don't. Anyways, y'all, thank you for watching, you know, stay tuned to stories like this. I love talking about relationships and pygmisha stuff and all that good stuff. Bye.